Hello Legends. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Replit's new design mode to take raw execution data from your NAN workflows, which looks like this, and actually really quickly and easily convert it into this nice looking portal. So one of the benefits of actually using a portal like this is firstly, if you're working for like you got a client and you're managing multiple workflows for them, it's easy for you to go into these logs because you know, you're a developer, you built this and you can actually go into here and just see all the executions. And maybe for you, it's very visually easy to understand. But if you have a client, like how amazing would it be if all the workflows that you're managing for them, you just have this like nice portal where they can go into and they can see all the executions in a very nice, clean, structured format. So all these invoices and all this data, by the way, is just like dummy data that I have uploaded to Replit. It's not actual data. But as you can see here, it's literally plugged into my Superbase database and it's just showing exactly like all the executions. Over here, we had some failed runs. So even for yourself, if you're gonna come into here, you can just see the failed one itself. Maybe you have a URL in your database that actually takes you across to that execution from NAN. And then maybe you're actually able to just like click on failed over here and pull up that execution. So for this video, I actually really wanna focus on this new design mode for Replet. And one of the, well, one of the main reasons I like design mode is for standard AI building tools, one downside of them that I don't really like is when you have like this half-baked idea in your head of what you want to build and you go to one of these tools, they typically build the front end, like what it looks like, and then the back end at the same time. And then if you want to make a change to anything, you kind of find yourself having to like peel, peel back the front end and underneath it, you see like all these things are connected up all the wall sockets are plugged in from one to the other. So then if you want to make any changes on the front end, you actually have to go and unplug all the sockets from the walls, clean everything up, then make the change to the front end, and then come back and kind of plug all these plugs in again. So that process gets a little bit tedious. Replit's design mode doesn't plug in anything underneath. It literally just builds the front end, the scaffolding of how the app would look or this website or whatever you're building without plugging anything in underneath. And then it gives you the option of when you're ready with a design and you fully like how it looks, you can then uh, take action to build out the rest of this app. So for this video, I'm literally gonna say that I'm starting with this Superbase database. I'm gonna go into the design mode, speak with the agent, get it to build that initial UI. Once I'm happy with it, then I'm gonna uh, hit the go button and actually build out the entire configuration to my Superbase database. It's gonna be extremely easy. Now, in this video, I'm also going to show you some new features that were released in Replit. For example, this fast mode, which allows you to, instead of using the AI agent, which might take a couple of minutes to complete some steps and changes, you have this like ultra fast experience where this agent is like a sniper, just like pinpoint. You shine the, t uh, the torch at that specific location and this agent will fix it in, uh, in a very short amount of time. So this is super cool. So for us, the first thing I want to do is go across to Superbase. And I'm just going to go into this database button here. And I've got a high level schema of all the tables that I have in my database. So what I want to do here is take a screenshot, go back to our design area, drag the screenshot in and say, I have these four tables in Superbase. I want to design a portal for me to be able to view the performance of my NAN workflows using the attached schema and tables, design the portal. So what we've just done is we've just literally gone to our database. It doesn't matter how you set it up from like the NAN side, like when you're building out your workflows, you can build out whatever tables you like and then come back into this uh, schema visualizer and just take a screenshot of how that table is laid out and then give it to the Replit design mode. And yeah, from here, we're just gonna see Replit is gonna take that picture, take our instructions and then build the front end scaffolding of the app. So uh, let's just see how long it takes page four or four not found. Yeah, that makes sense. We're just still building this out. Actually, while we're waiting for this first section to complete, there's a there's a bunch of cool websites that I found that were built using Replit design mode. And uh, Replit design is actually, it's powered by Gemini 3.0. So the design is actually a lot nicer than some like very generic designs that you might be used to with different tools. But like this little interactive like depth and then these images, how you can hover over them, the color changes, all this stuff is literally designed by the design mode. So this is like, yeah, that's really cool. Since it's also using Gemini 3, it can create some of these like little visuals. So when it's building out your app, it actually uses the, the image creator model to just generate some images. What's this like a menu as well? 
you create your order. There's another website here. Like very interactive. And I think it actually created all these images for this specific app build out as well. Then we have this. Okay, there you are. So this is also created by the uh, design mode. This like, I think it's like a five or an eight second. There you go on a replay. It just creates these images and it just cycles through them. So you can actually build really cool websites. So, but yeah, for this video, we're literally just looking at how to build a portal for our NAN workflows. If you do want to see a bit of a more like a build out of how to create websites, I was actually playing around with this for my own website because don't go on it, but my website is, I made it like two years ago before I got into the AI automation space. I was doing it for like customer support stuff and I built it in WordPress by myself. I have no idea what I was doing. I had no idea what I was doing and I still don't but I gave my URL to the design mode and I said, just take this in like one sentence. I'm like, take this and just, can you just redesign it for me? Actually, let me see if I can find it. So this is the redesign of my website. It generated this image while it was uh, figuring out like the new layout, all that kind of stuff that you see here, I kind of like pops up even when I hover over or how it appears when I'm scrolling through the screen. And this is actual content from my website. I'm pretty sure maybe even like the copy is edited as well. So it's not as, uh, it's not as bad. And then you have this like contact form. So this looks a lot better. I don't want to show you my previous website. It's a little bit embarrassing, but um, yeah, the only, the prompt that I gave to this agent was this over here. So go to my website, there's the URL guys and redesign it for me because right now it is not good. So yeah, that was a very fun little exercise. Okay, nice. So it looks like we've completed the first uh, stage of our design. So create NAN workflow performance monitoring portal. So right now the back end is it's not plugged into Superbase. It's just using some mock data just so we can see how this looks. We have the primary dashboard page, AI agent logs. So the cool thing is that we don't have to design like we don't have to like prompt up any of the back end and say like here map this variable to this slot. This is how I want you to show these results the agent is actually thinking of all this stuff by itself based on the image that we gave it of the schema of our database. And the presentation here is really nice. I like the colors. It's very simple to see. It's not like over the top. Yeah, I really like this. So while we're in this design mode, the agent is actually just focused on design. So we can kind of come back into here and reprompt it to continue cha making some changes to our design. So some things that you can do from here is you can go to like a nice dashboard tool like Grafana, for example, uh, lets you visualize Superbase data or other databases data. So you can come into here and just like a screenshot of any of this stuff and just paste it into your design mode agent and just say, hey, can you just modify the design of this to reflect or like look more like this? If you are building websites as well, you can go into something like dribble.com and you can just preview a bunch of designs and then like just find something that actually matches your specific use case. For us, since we're building the portal, we don't want any of this kind of website looking stuff. So Grafana is a better tool for us, or there might even be some options that you can choose from, from Dribbble as well. But there's a bunch of different like resources that you can access. But the main point I'm making here is that even if you don't get it perfectly right within the actual editor window like this, you can just go out to Google and just try and find other resources, other websites that you like, and then take some screenshots and bring it back into here, into this chat and just say, hey, can you update the design to match something like this a little bit more closely? So I'm just gonna keep moving forward because I do like simple. And this is, this is yeah, simple and clean enough for me. And I'm just gonna say, hey, I'm ready to build this out. Can you please use the official Superbase library to connect to my database? Let me know what API keys or other secret information you need from me. So I'm gonna go off and hit enter. So the agent went away and actually did some research before coming and prompting us to convert this to an app. And the interesting thing is that it actually found that client library that we were speaking about. And that client library is just listed on the Superbase documentation. And this is the exact thing that we wanna use. So, so we didn't actually have to go away and do any research ourselves. The design mode agent, after reading our prompt and understanding our request, went away, did the research on its own and is now ready to actually convert this to an app. So I'm just gonna click convert to an app. And over here we have this top section basically says like, hey, do you wanna keep staying in design mode and continue making some changes? But um, yeah, we're just gonna go with the app version and I'm not gonna give any additional comments to the agent. I'm pretty sure it knows what to do from now. So let's just click yes, convert to app. So now the build mode agent has gone away and done some more research and found that we need to supply the Superbase project URL 
and the super base and non key as well. And over here we have a section to actually insert that data. So super base URL, let's go back into super base and go into project settings. And I think it's data API. There we go. I'm just going to copy this, go back into our configuration panel, paste it into here and super base and non key. And I think that's under API keys. There we go. Just scroll down and then over here, just copy this key back in our project. Let's paste it into here and save these variables. So now we've actually just given all the credentials that we need for the agent to complete this build. And let's see what happens next. All right, looks like the final refresh is happening. Let's see if the agent can figure out that error that just popped up on a screen by itself. We'll give it a couple more moments and just, yeah, see what happens over here. So the agent paused for a second and kept trying to make some changes to this screen, but this error was persisting. So I see the issue, the environment variables aren't being passed onto the front end correctly. Let me fix the super base client in initialization and then the sidebar component as well. So let's see if it's suggested steps actually fix this issue. I said correctly, let me check the logs to see if the app is connected properly, aren't being passed to Vite. Let me create a .env file, which Vite will automatically pick up. Okay, so maybe there was an issue with how we submitted the credentials to the assistant. Okay, nice. So it looks like something is working now. Let's wait until it's fully finished and we can actually see the data pulled in from our Superbase database. And then I'm just going to summarize what happened because, wait a minute, where's all of our data? So it looks like the agent was able to figure out that initial issue. It did some testing, it found that whatever it was trying wasn't working, and then it eventually figured out a workaround by itself. It took about two or three minutes, but it seems like there's a new bug where we're not actually pulling in any data from our Superbase database. So everything here is totally not filled out. I'm just gonna go across to the fast mode and say, I don't see any of my data in the app and let's just take a screenshot just so the assistant knows as well and pop it into here and let's hit enter. So this is one of the things that actually happens when you're using these AI tools, especially the very autonomous ones. This previous portal that you guys saw, I ran the exact same process and when I gave the credentials to the agent, it literally was able to get the credentials, install the library, and then on that very first shot, I saw this specific dashboard. I didn't have to say, hey, it's not showing anything. I ran into no issues whatsoever. And um, yeah, the fact of the matter is that no matter what tool you use, there's always gonna be these like little nuances and little bugs that pop up. So I guess a really good skill to have is to be able to work with these tools who are very autonomous, who can do 99% of the work for you, but then understand how to go that extra, like that final 1% where you're actually needed to do some of your own investigation. And that's a really cool skill to have as well. So you probably experienced this before where you try it one time, you try it today and it works, then you try it tomorrow and it doesn't work. And this is just a very common thing when you're using like autonomous tools. Okay, so it looks like the my simple prompt over here where I said I don't see any of the data in the actual app uh, and I gave the screenshot it looks like the fast mode was able to fix that incredibly quickly, to be honest. So let's see, uh, your portal should now be showing your real super base data. Can you see the workflow logs and stuff displaying correctly? Let's go through this one by one. So 79 executions total. That's how many I installed in my mock data in super base. Can I get a replacement hose? Yes, this is, this is perfect. This is actually pulling in directly from that database. Invoice processing. Orders are showing a lot of these as failed status and then SMSs are showing here as well. Yeah, so actually now that fix or that extra prompt did fix this for us. So then from here, the final thing I would do before deploying the app and making it public online is I would add authentication. So you can come right into here and just say, hey, Replit agent, can you use the Replit authentication process for me? Or can I would prefer to use the Superbase authentication? create that authentication, get a username and password for your client, give it to them, and then have them um, access this URL and have to sign in to actually view this information. So that would be the like the minimum thing that I would do before giving this to my client. And then when you're ready, you can just click this publish button up here. And this is like my favorite thing about Replit. And this has been my favorite thing for the last two years that I've been using these guys is that to publish this, you just click the blue publish button I always keep the default settings when I'm first launching an app. And then if I need to upgrade or scale it, I will come back into here and change the settings later on. But the default mode is typically enough to just get you going. 
And for 80% of my use cases, I actually, it's enough to sustain me long term as well. So we'll wait a couple of minutes. We'll have this deployed live to our website. Sorry, live to the, uh, to the internet. And now we are fully deployed. So you can either keep this exact URL, which is supplied by Replit, and this is going to be accessible online by anyone. So if you guys actually just click that link, you could also see this. Or you could either purchase a domain through Replit, which I haven't done before, so I don't know how the process is. But you can get your, I think it's like DNS settings, and you can get your own domain and point this URL to your own domain and just have like an extension. So for example, supportlaunchpad.com forward slash and maybe like client A or something like that. And then they can use that link. It's integrated into your own URL. So it looks like a bit more on-brand, a bit more professional. And then, yeah, you just give this to your client from there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do want to see me using Replit, all right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. If you do want to see me dive a little bit deeper into any of these areas, maybe it's how to add authentication to this portal. Maybe it's going into NAN and showing you how I log events from my workflows into a Superbase database, or maybe a start to finish of that entire section altogether. Let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.